Are you interested in what would be in our future? What is humans' future plan? What would be after one year or even a millennium? When I'm asking you all these questions, I always remember one famous show. One of the teachers asked in class, can people predict their future? And the boy said, yes, of course, my mother can. Really? Asked the teacher in disbelief. Yes, she takes my weapon card and tells me what happened when my father came home. So, in the middle of 20th century, it's really hard to even understand for people that they develop lots of gadgets, lots of electronic devices such as mobile phones or dozens of other items. But for nowadays, it's reality. In some way, for instance, in medicine, they created the artificial organs, or there are some multifunctional libraries, and we see it in our life. But several years ago, some writers wrote about it. Some fantasy writers, science fiction writers, these are the main, maybe not me, but the major authors of science fiction, and I think you all know about it. So, Julius Verne and the modern submarine. We all know that in, in the middle of the 19th century, maybe, Julius Verne wrote about submarines, but there was no idea about it, and it was, well, revolution. But some people said, mostly writers, that it was a total nonsense, and no one can interest in it, <coughs> because Julius Verne wrote about, not, it's not a real fantasy, they said, but after several years, we saw the result that in the military system, we all know about this submarine, and it's really important. In, in the World War, we see the result. <coughs> the second idea of the same author was moon, the capture of the moon. In the middle of the 20th century, we see the result, that the Americans go there and capture But uh, is it maybe a coincidence that in the middle of 19th century, Julius Verne wrote, wrote about it. And it's like an inspiration maybe for Americans, for NASA. Uh, I don't know the exact answer, but maybe yes, because they're interested in the planet, moon itself, and after all, they captured it. And Buzz Aldrin always laughed about this fact that he captured the moon. And after all, his neighbor will be very happy. Hyperstay Clark and the Space Odyssey. So, one of the major creator and the inspirer of sci-fi in general itself was Arthur C. Clark. And his main idea was the Space Odyssey, the Space Odyssey. And we see he had five volumes of books, and he wrote a lot. He wrote about the exploration of space, of Milky Way, and we see the results here, that in the 21st century, Americans go there and have some expeditions and serious explorations and have results of them. So this is not it's a true fact that he wrote and it was a fantasy in that time, but today it's reality. But in some way you can say that it's a coincidence. Okay. So as we have the rules of robotics, I think everyone know about robots, everyone know about what's robotics and the robot rules. So, this writer was one of the most interesting ones because he wrote about robots in the middle of 20th century when there was no idea how they can even make it. So, uh, in 21st century, we have robots, but it has some problems. And this was told us that it has some problems in that time also. But after several years, all these problems were solved. And we have a modern robot which would be really strong, and it's like a part of this whole technological progress. Mars is our mysterious future. So, this is really interesting that uh, about Mars there are many novels, but the most famous one was Mars Chronicles, written by Ray Bradbury, and the main idea was that people will explore this planet, capture it, and after all, they have some Mars machines also. It, I think it's not a coincidence because today Americans made some uh, machines, Mars machines, and they created and they have 
like the same plans that this writer taught in the middle of 20th century. So this writer has some futuristic ideas, but I have one question. How they can even maybe predict the future if they are ordinary people? Yes, I agree with you that they are ordinary people and they have the same ideas that we have. And it's a total nonsense that they sat at the sofa, uh, drink an orange juice, and think about future. No, it's a part of the thinking. They think a lot, but they think a lot not only about future, about our past, about our present, and they develop some futuristic ideas, which maybe can become reality. The Big Brother is always watching you. The famous novel written by uh, George Orwell, 1984. So you see that this novel is uh, about collapsing the communism, but itself the idea is really interesting. But in that time when he wrote it, it was in 1948, and it was a total march of the Soviet Union and communism. So there was no idea against this fact. But this writer said that it was a, it will be a total collapse after several years. And after maybe 45, 50 years, we see the result that the Soviet Union collapsed and there are lots of problems here. Many political parties also have some ideas and some inspiration when they write this. And after all, maybe some movements also based on this fact. So what kind of people are writers, mostly science fiction writers? They wrote only about what they see, or maybe they dream a lot, or they have some great imagination. Yes, but every person has great imagination, and people mostly have interesting ideas, but they need to develop it, and after all, we will see the futuristic idea. And the futuristic idea is that it inspired, for example, scientists make something new. And some multifunctional libraries help a lot for that. And also about this fact, wrote Isaac Asimov in 1988, where there was no idea about it. So at least science fiction itself, the preface we say science, science fiction, is a real part of science. And it's based on it. But the second fact is that mostly science fiction writers are biologists, math professors, or physicists. So we see that all these writers can maybe in some way predict the future or develop lots of futuristic ideas. So, but writers did it for us because writers always work hard to make our world a better place. Maybe here mm, there are some futuristic ideas and I think that you can develop it and maybe you will be one of the most influential futurists. Thank you for your attention.